Good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just a few minutes. So be patient and we have some more people coming in. So we'll get started at about 10.01. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our um, Get a Grant workshop. Um, so I'm Stephanie Hospelhorn. I'm one of the education specialists with Ag in the Classroom. And I'm Lee Deal, and I'm the other education specialist with Ag in the Classroom. All right, so today, um, welcome, first of all, for everybody who has been with us before and knows about our program and all that. Um, if you have been to one of our Get a Grant workshops um, previous uh, to this year, then um, it's going to be run exactly the same. For So for those of you who are new here, basically what we're going to do, and actually I might even have a slide. Um, today, basically, we are going to go over uh, what the grant information is, the requirements, requirements, the due dates for everything. We're going to talk about all of the different books. Um, we're going to give a real, real short summary of each of the books and talk about um, some of our lessons that we have created um, past in and currently to um, fit with these uh, with the books so that you can easily use these in your classroom. Um, part of the book grants, as you know, is to integrate ag into your classroom. And so we have tons of lessons that pair easily with the books that you can um, just use right there. Um, we're also going to go over some different uh, recipients from um, our, our past recipients from the different winners um, and tell you a little bit about how they used uh, the books in their classrooms. And same with the project grant. We're going to go over that information. We're going to talk about the previous winners and what they used the materials in their classrooms for. At the very end, um, we will have time for uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout um, this entire presentation, um, we will at the very end cover all of those. So go ahead. Um, if you have a question, you can type it into the Q&A box. Um, and then, like I said, at the very end, we will we'll go over all of those questions if we haven't covered them. So we're not going to answer any questions during the presentation. But if you stay for the whole thing, we will do those all at the very end. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, so with the book grant, so the purpose of both grants um, is to integrate agriculture into your spring classroom curriculum. So when we're going through this, Think about what your curriculum is in the spring and how you can integrate, um, the, you know, topics of agriculture or these books within that curriculum in the spring. Um, the books you choose for the, uh, from the book grant um, should be incorporated into some sort of project, um, lesson, unit study. It could be just, you know, a couple days worth of, of little activities to help encourage um, your learners uh, to be more ag literate. Um, understand, you know, the concepts of different aspects of agriculture, all of that kind of stuff. So we'll go into, into a lot more detail, but the basics are that 
um, you have up to $250 uh, worth of books. So you can use that full $250 or you may not use that full amount. It's kind of up to how you wanna use the books in your own classroom. The application link you can see right there, we have a tiny URL. So it would be iaitc.co backslash book grants. So that's the short URL. Again, at the very end, we'll also show you the web page where all of this stuff is hosted and where you can find it. But if you jot that down now or type it into a different URL as we're speaking, you can have that open. Both grants um, are going to be due by October 20th. So that's the last day. Once the end of the day on October 20th hits, we close that down um, until the following year. So you have um, until October 20th to apply. Um, you'll be notified somewhere um, uh, around the November 20th, usually, or November 10th. Um, we will send out an email to everybody who has been awarded and for those who have not been awarded as well. Um, you do part of it, even if you, once you're awarded that, you have to sign a funding agreement by December 8th. So if you're awarded um, the book grant, and you don't sign the funding agreement by December 8th, you don't get those books, okay? We have to have the funding agreement signed to let you to let us know that you understand, you know, the requirements of the program and all of that stuff. And then the final thing that you'll have to do is on May 31st, at the very end of the school year, you just have to submit your final report. And that is a requirement for the program. So please make sure if you do get this, um, you go through um, all of that. I will send out a checklist uh, so that you can check it off throughout the year or hang it on your bulletin board to not forget. Um, so with the book grant, we have five different categories. And what you're gonna do is choose books within one of those categories. And you're restricted to books with within that category. Another thing I wanna say before we start going through the books is that um, you can only apply for one book grant um, as a teacher. So if I was a teacher and I was applying, I can only apply for one book grant within one specific category. And I can also apply for a project grant, but I myself can't apply for a book grant within, you know, the soil category and then another book grant within life on the farm category. So you can apply for one grant um, for each book grant and project grant. Um, so our five categories this year are going to be soil, life on the farm, celebrating diverse foods and families, graphic novels, and chapter books. So now Lee and I are going to go through, we're going to give a quick summary, like I said, and um, talk about some of our activities that we have that will pair nicely with these books. So this is just um, some of the books that we've got. These are our, um, I already put them out of order. Uh, we have Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt, A Seed Grows, What About Worms, Erosion, and Under Your Feet. Okay, so let's get started. So Erosion, this cute book, um, this is a true story about Hugh Bennett. He is also known as the father of soil conservation. Um, and the story is about how he ended the Dust Bowl by lobbying with Congress um, for a bill to protect and conserve our soil. So really cool book. Lots of great illustrations in here, if you can see this. Um, and you're bringing some of that um, that historical um, side into there. So we've got that cross uh, curriculum with um, some history and social studies. You've got the soil, um, of course, and you can talk about the biography of Hugh Bennett himself. So um, a couple of uh, activities that we have paired with this book that would be awesome to use if this is what you want to use with your book grant. Um, we have an erosion simulator. Now we have created a video with the erosion simulator and you can see some screenshots of it down here on the bottom left-hand side of the corner. Um, talking about what is erosion and what are some ways that we could maybe um, eliminate or uh, lessen the effects of erosion. Um, and so we have a, a erosion simulator. And so this is just a, a little kit that we had purchased. You could definitely use just two liter uh, bottles and cut them. Um, um, vertically and lay them down. And so what we're doing is um, in the video, we're pouring water from a watering can over soil that has nothing. It's just soil 
versus pouring water over soil that has um, plants where the roots are holding all of the soil together. And so you can see the difference in the movement of the soil, how much uh, soil is in the water um, in the bin at the bottom once you, once you got done raining. So that would be a really great way to talk about the movement of, um, of soil, whether it's with wind like in the dust bowl um, or water when we have um, some really heavy rain. So that would be a really great lesson to pair with erosion. Our next book is A Seed Grows by Antoinette Fortis. And this is a really easy read about the life cycle of a sunflower and all of the factors that influence the growth of a seed. One of those factors uh, being um, soil and the nutrients in the soil. Um, and so really cute book, a super, super easy read. You can see this is for really young readers. Um, great, uh, uh, a great book for a read aloud. Um, and the, the um, activity that we chose for this was an activity called Soil Sam. Um, I know many of you have already done Soil Sams before. They're a great way to talk about all of the things that uh, a seed needs to grow. And so you can see it's a little blurry, but we've got a little picture of a Soil Sam, basically like a Chia pet for those of you who uh, had Chia pets or maybe still do. Um, but we've got a little soil sand. Uh, you plant some sort of monocot seed, so some sort of grass. It could be grass seed or wheat seeds. Um, and then you fill up the pantyhose with soil. Um, you've got your water reservoir, which is either a little baby food jar, or you can buy plastic jars on you know, Amazon or something. And um, you could just watch um, how it grows. They can decorate and make a character out of it. They can write stories about their characters. Um, but one of my favorite things is to make this kind of an inquiry based activity. So if you are teaching, you know, third grade, fourth grade and up, you could definitely start changing the variables to see how those specific factors affect the growth of the plant. So maybe um, when you have water down here, uh, that could be your control, but maybe we put a little lemon in the water and see if the lemon might affect the growth of the plant. Or maybe we put some Mountain Dew in there and see if that might, you know, make it grow faster and give it some energy. Or maybe we use compost instead of potting soil, you know, for, for the dirt. So there's a lot of variables that you can change to make it inquiry based, but that's a really cute lesson. Um, and then they have a little character that they can take care of and you can measure its hair and then, you know, um, teach them, you know, to measure it with a ruler and then give it haircuts and all that stuff. So lots of really cool data collection and, um, and inquiry based science that you can do with this. Um, or even with your super young kiddos, just have them create a character and, and let them uh, let their characters grow fun, crazy hair, all studying science at the same time. Um, the What About Worms? Oh my gosh, this is such a cute book. So this is from the Elephant and Piggy series, if you're familiar with those. Um, and our main character, Tiger, as you can see on the, the front cover, um, hates worms, is afraid of the worms, um, but is learning about all of the amazing things that the worms do for the soil. And there's a really cute uh, little plot twist at the very end. But again, really cute illustrations, easy for a read aloud, easy for um, young um, learners to read. Um, so very cute book. And the activity that we chose to pair with this is, of course, a, a classroom vermicompost bin. A great way to introduce uh, taking care of a class pet that's super easy um, to talk about the life cycle of, of worms, to talk about decomposers, what is decomposition, why are they beneficial for the soil. It gives them a little of responsibility also because they have to feed them. And so, you know, uh, having your students bring back some of their lunch scraps that normally might go to a landfill, you can have them bring back their apple core or their, you know, the crust of their, their uh, sandwich from lunch um, and assign students, you know, once a week or every other week um, uh, to bring back and, and feed them. So there's um, some worksheets that go with this if you want to collect that data to see how often you're feeding them, what you're feeding them, how quickly they're eating through it, um, all sorts of stuff. You can sift through them and get the worms out and observe their behavior um, and all of that stuff. So it, it kind of turns into its own little ecosystem on the inside. So a really great way to introduce some worms, easy class pets fun stuff, all of that. Okay, three more or two more books in the soil category. On the left hand side, we have um, the book Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. This is by Kate Messner. 
Um, really cute story. I've got the book right here. It tells the story of a little girl and her grandma, um, and they're going to plant and tend to their garden. And basically the grandmother teaches about what they're doing up in the garden and then what's happening in the soil um, below. What are all the organisms doing? So talking about the process of gardening uh, is a lot about us taking care of the plants above and then the bugs doing their thing um, below. So really great book. And uh, the, the activity that we paired with this is one of our absolute favorite activities, and this is called Soil Your Undies. And so it is a great visual for students to see that even though we don't see what's living in the dirt, and sometimes even if we scoop out um, a handful of dirt, you know, we, we can see, um, you know, the worms or the beetles, but we can't see all of the microbes that are living in there that are helping uh, uh, break down all the organic material. And so this is a great way to uh, help students visualize that. And so you're just going to get a pack of uh, cotton underpants, um, and then you're going to bury them. And you're going to bury two or three pairs in the same location around the same time. And then every so often you're going to dig them up and see what they look like and compare and contrast. And so you can see in the picture up here, we have our plain pair of undies. This is what they looked like uh, when we first bought the pack. And then right here is when we dug them up about two and a half months after we buried them. And you can see that they're starting to break down. So every, all of the cotton part is being eaten away and, um, and the, what is left, this string right here, is that, um, uh, what's the seam? The seam, yeah. And so that is um, not organic material, right? It's synthetic material made from plastic. Um, and so we're seeing that the, the bugs in the soil are eating at the organic material and breaking it down. And then you can bring in some uh, topics about um, uh, our nutrient cycles and all of that fun stuff. So it's a really cool and really fun and goofy way to you know, get students excited about the bugs in the soil and, you know, the processes that are happening and why that's super beneficial um, for us growing food and plants. Um, the last book is called Under Your Feet. Um, this is uh, chock full of amazing illustrations, lots of diagrams, lots of information about the soil that's underneath our feet. Um, and it's really uh, very science heavy. And so you can see a lot of these, there's a lot of text short little paragraphs of text, um, easy to digest. This is a great book for fourth grade through sixth grade. I honestly, I would probably even have a book like this when I was teaching eighth grade. Lots of awesome information, great pictures, everything that's happening underneath our feet in different, um, different biomes. So the activity that we chose to pair with this was our candy core sampling. This is very similar to our Play-Doh core sampling. Play-Doh prices are getting a little pricey. Uh, candy is always fun. It's a, a fun snack and Halloween um, sales will be up. So grab your bags of candy pretty soon. But basically what you're doing is you're getting, um, you're having, you got straws. You, we have found that the boba straws work the best because they're um, the fattest, but you're gonna have your students take a core sample. And so you can talk about how scientists use core samples to study the different layers um, of the soil and all sorts of properties of soil. And so what we're doing here is, um, mimicking that same uh, that same technique that scientists use, but just using straw and candy. And so you can see on the screen, we've got different, uh, these are all uh, four different types of candy bars, and you can clearly see the different layers of ingredients, very similar to how scientists can clearly see different layers um, within the soil underneath our feet. So you've got your topsoil, um, you know, your, um, your organic layer, all of a sudden your bedrock, all of that, I, all of a sudden I can't even think of the actual layers, but this activity is a great way to um, show students that soil is layered and what are the processes. Um, you know, fifth, sixth grade standards talking about tectonic plates. This is a great way to uh, talk about the movement of the land beneath us. So a really cool way to um, talk about soil. So those, um, oh, and I forgot these, um, 
Right in the center, you can see we just added a couple more resources for you to utilize. Uh, if you go to soilsforteachers.org, this is an awesome website where you can learn about the soil from every different state. What is their state soil? What is their soil com um, com compromised of? Um, so you can see there's a map right here where uh, we've got all of Illinois and then drummer soil, which is our state soil, you can see where it is all um, located. So uh, lots of really cool maps and diagrams um, on this website, a lot of uh, good information. So that is our soil category. All right, um, next up is our life on the farm category. So we have uh, the five really fun um, books that are just kind of like variety of talking about what actually happens on the farm and bringing in some different kinds of specialty crops and um, livestock and, and gardening and all of that good stuff. Um, the one thing I did want to mention about the book grant books is that in, if you have your pamphlet that you may have gotten at SAIs or um, on the website and the grant page, it lists a price for each one of these books. Um, so we are offering them to you at that price. So that's where you, how you spend your 250. Um, but we actually got them half price from the publishers. Um, so you're actually getting $500 worth of books rather than 250. So, um, so it's a pretty good deal here. So um, the first book in the category um, is Barn at Night. We have featured this one um, a couple of different times. It's just about a family that does barn chores on a cold winter night um, and the stories of the animals and, and the chores and stuff that happen in the barn. Um, we did a really cool video series with this book whenever it launched a couple of years ago um, where we asked some like high school students and Illinois residents um, kind of partner with us on social media and just film a video of what happens in their barn at at night. Um, and so there's a really cool social media campaign, kind of a collection of videos that we posted on social media that relate to this book. Um, we have a couple of other of other cool things that uh, might be useful for you to pair with this book. Um, the first down here in the corner, it's probably hard to see all of the different details of, of what's happening on here, but um, this is what's called a zine. If you've ever made one of those, think of the word magazine, but like the, the last you know, syllable of that zine. Um, and so what you do with this is you would print um, this document on like 11 by 17 paper and then you make like a cut down the middle and fold it a certain way and it becomes a little book um, like a little miniature magazine and so this one is our um, farm book so it's got lots of different um, things about like structures barns and sheds um, as well as different kinds of farm animals animal feed vocabulary um, we've got a few different um, styles of these that are going to be kind of launching this upcoming school year but this would be a really that would be a really cool lesson to um, integrate with barn at night. Um, the next one we have is Farm Boots. Um, this one is uh, really, really fun. It's uh, one uh, newest one from one of our favorite authors, Liesl Detlefsen. She has a lot of really good books that we really love. Um, it's just about the different types of boots that you might find on a, on a farm and the work that they do. Um, so it's got really, really fun illustrations and kind of showing like, these are my boots and this is what I do with them. Um, we also did a social media campaign with Farm Boots where we asked people um, around the state to show us their boots. Um, and so we've got some, some videos of that. Um, we got a lot of variety with that as well. Um, the lesson that we actually designed specifically for this book is just a design your own farm boots um, lesson. It's um, probably for younger students, just like this book would be for um, kind of your, your younger grade students um, where they're just gonna design their boots. They're gonna color them in. They're gonna talk about what they might do um, in their boots. Um, so that's a fun one too. Um, my Grandpa, My Tree, and Me, this book is so good. If there's one book on here that I just, it's so good, you guys. I got goosebumps reading this book. It's so good. Um, it follows uh, the story of a girl and her grandpa. The grandpa runs a pecan orchard, pecan. We have a lot of arguments in the office about how to pronounce this word. Um, and they care for the trees in their pecan orchard while the grandpa, when this little girl was born, planted one pecan tree like kind of off to the side. And so it shows the process, the difference between how they mass care for the pecan trees in the big orchard and then how this little girl and her grandpa care for their one little pecan tree um, that they have kind of in the backyard. And, and so just showing the difference between large scale farming um, and kind of small individual scale farming. Um, for, for a pretty unique specialty crop. I mean, we don't have a lot of um, pecans in Illinois. We have just a, a kind of a couple, three farms. So 
Um, really, really cute book. Um, the, the lesson that we're pairing with this is actually a lesson that was written kind of about apple trees, but we think that the concepts within it um, would relate really closely to pecan orchards. And this is uh, kind of our one of our newer ones that we launched this summer um, called Healthy Trees Apple Edition. Um, and the concept of it is that the students would kind of spread out in an area um, in the classroom where there's a lot of open space. They root themselves down, so they stand in one place and they cannot move. Um, and give themselves a little bit of like kind of branch room as if they are a tree. Um, and then you as the teacher go around and spread a bunch of these multicolored little poker chips around their feet and then ask them one by one, um, color by color to pick up as many of the yellow chips as they can find around their feet or as many of the blue ones. Um, and each one of the poker chips actually correlates to something related to tree health and what trees need to survive. And a lot of them are good things like sunlight or water or pollinators, but some of them are bad things like harmful insects. And so there's a little bit of mystery involved and, um, and it's really super fun. And then they end up actually collecting all of the chips that they can around their feet um, in the soil that's available to them. And then they actually go and calculate a healthy tree score. So each color has some points associated with it that they actually do some math um, to, to figure out. And so we actually have two different versions of this on the website. Um, we have, and it really is the same concept, same procedures, but the worksheets, we have one that's designed for grades two and three. So the math concepts are more targeted towards those age level kiddos. And then we have one that's for like four through six, but I think you could use that even up into middle school as well. Um, and so it just, the worksheet is a little bit different just to make sure that the math concepts are appropriate for that grade of student. Um, so that's a really fun one too, that we kind of launched this summer. Um, a couple more in the category, um, Logan's Greenhouse. So our main character, Logan, um, is getting ready for a pet play date. Um, so he's going to have some friends bring over their different kinds of pets that they have. Um, and he has to harvest some carrots from his greenhouse to give to the pets. Um, and so he's walking around, is this a carrot? No, is this a carrot? No, but he's learning about all of those different um, plants and uh, that are in the greenhouse and also about like which parts of the plant we are actually eating from all of these different plants that are growing in his greenhouse. Um, and so the two lessons that are on this page actually both would go really nicely with Logan's greenhouse, but we chose one for Logan's greenhouse and one for potatoes for Pirate Pearl. But um, this lesson is called Ins and Outs. And um, they actually, you would print out a, a series of cards that have um, a specific fruit or vegetable on them. So it's got a picture of the entire plant that it grows on, a picture of just the fruit or the vegetable, and then a picture of um, the inside, like super zoomed in um, inside the plant. And so um, they would have to match together. So this is what a peach looks like that you recognize from the store. Well, this is what the inside looks like, and this is what the whole plant looks like. Um, this would be a really cool one to, to integrate when talking about fruits and vegetables and what different parts of the plant we're actually eating. Um, kind of along the same lines, Potatoes for Pirate Pearl. This is the only one that we don't have um, actually a physical copy of because it's like currently being printed. It's not actually um, a, available as a printed copy yet, but it will be by the time you would get um, your hands on these books. But um, the main character, Pearl, um, is uh, Harp, she and her parrot um, are growing potatoes and it's like very kind of pirate, you know, themed and, and it's got some cool um, like pirate talk and that kind of stuff. So um, this is a really good one. It's the newest book from our one of our favorite publishers, Feeding Minds Press, which is the American Farm Bureau's um, publishing company. Um, so you know it's really good, ag accurate, um, kind of creative story. But the lesson that we like for this one um, is our plant parts logic puzzle. Um, so this is looking specifically at all of these different vegetables. Are they a root? Are they a leaf? Are they a stem? Um, as far as the part of the plant that we actually eat. Um, and just like a little tri trivia information for you in this webinar, um, a lot of people would assume that a potato is a root vegetable because it grows underground, but it's actually not. It's a specialized stem called a tuber. Um, and so potatoes are actually intentionally left off of this lesson because we think that students around the state and adults around the state would just 
kind of not know that a potato is actually a stem. Um, so it's intentionally left off for that reason, just so that it's not confusing. We've got some more obvious ones on there. Um, but plant parts logic puzzle is really fun. Um, you would print off these little cards and then they have to kind of match them um, together on the board. So like in this one, we've got, I think that's a horseradish. It's hard to see. They've got a, a horseradish and a beet. Um, that they're matching together because those are both root vegetables and then a pumpkin and a cucumber because those are both fruit vegetables. And then as you go along the and, and kind of com complete the board, it gets more and more difficult because then you're having to match three vegetables all together. And um, so that's just a really fun logic puzzle activity. All right. All right. On to our next category. So this one is called Celebrating Diverse Foods and Families. Um, you know, we really love these books. Not only are they ag accurate, but we're introducing students to a lot of different uh uh, foods and different cultures and celebrations from around the world, um, which we just absolutely love. So these, this is just a highlight of all the books. All right, so the first book is I Ate Sunshine for Breakfast. Really cute book. It's very colorful and it takes us around the world. Um, through the celebration of all of these different plants. You learn uh, about diverse plants. Um, there's a lot of different facts in here about those plants. There's also um, activities included in here. Um, so very much, let me see, this one has a lot of illustrations on it. You can see these pages. A um, lot of very, uh, very similar to the Under Your Feet book where there's more facts, it's more science-based, nonfiction. Um, rather than a fictional story, but lots of really cool stuff. But the focus is on plants themselves and how we utilize plants for many different reasons, whether it's, you know, for food or celebrations or for our clothing um, or for medicines, anything like that. So really great book. And what we paired this with um, is indoor bingo. And so this is kind of an out of the box connection, but very similar um, ideas. And so we created indoor bingo in 2020 um, and as a, a way to get students to, you know, see what is in their cupboards, what is in their cabinets that they have at home um, and are those materials, how are they connected to the world of agriculture? And so with indoor bingo, if you look really closely, we have um, a whole bingo uh, um, card with um, all sorts of different uh, common items that we use. Um, so we've got soda, ham, cheese, makeup, all sorts of different stuff. And then behind those uh, images is a little um, lined drawing of the animal, the livestock animal that they come from, or the crop, the major commodity crop that they come from. So soda pop, there is corn in there. Um, ham and bacon, that's going to come from a pig. Um, cheese is going to come from a dairy cow, but you could also talk about how we have a lot of different other um, dairy products that come from different animals. Um, makeup, there's, there's parts of sheep in makeup and all sorts of stuff. So talking about how we utilize um, the byproducts, we get byproducts out of the crop and livestock that we, that we grow and raise. Um, so a really cool way to tie that in with um, the I ate sunshine for breakfast that we utilize as much as we can and try to eliminate the amount of waste. Um, Dumpling Day, this is such a, a cute book. So this one, um, we're, to, we're following 10 uh, diverse families from around the world, and they're preparing for uh, Dumpling Day. Um, and each family has a, a very different traditional type of dumpling that they're preparing. Um, but the cool thing is that they're all connected. Um, and so it's really um, a great way to talk about how families can be very, very different and have different traditions. But there are so many similarities tied in with all of our families. And so there's always something that you can find in common um, with, you know, different families. And so a really great way to get students to understand that about their classmates. Um, and then the lesson that we planned um, or are pairing with this is um, a hungry planet. And so you could do this in many different ways. The way that we have um, our actual lesson written up is as a gallery walk. But this book, Hungry Planet, planet is absolutely fantastic. Very high level, I would say high school or older, but what they do is they went around the world. Um, our author 
He went around the world and asked different families if he could interview them. And so he said, I'll, I'll you know, buy you a week's worth of groceries if I can take a, a picture of your family with the groceries and then interview you. Um, and so they give you uh, the types of foods that that family eats in one week, um, you know, how much it costs, what their, their uh um, budget is for one single week of food. And it's really incredible to see all of the different amounts um, of budgets around the world and the different types of foods based on the location that they're at. So we created this as a gallery walk to get students up and out of their chairs. But for your younger kiddos, you could just have the picture of the families and just talk about what do they notice? Is there any similar foods to what they, they eat at home? Um, but the best part is that um, Time Magazine did this really awesome article that you can find um, online about what kids eat around the world. And so very similar to The Hungry Planet, what they did was get pictures of students um, laying with all of their families favorite foods around. And so um, the really cool thing is that you could have, um, you know, these students might live in different countries, but they also might live in America. Um, and so it's really cool to see the different types of foods that they're interested in. Um, and you can see a variety of foods um, from different cultures um, around the students. And so seeing that inclusion and, and that diversity is, is an awesome thing to look at. Again, having your students talk about the foods that they eat, their favorite foods, comparing and, and contrasting what they eat um, with their classmates and with, you know, students who were, um, who were identified in, in this article or highlighted in the article. Um, the next book is Soul Food Sunday. This is such a great book. Awesome illustrations, very bright and colorful um, illustration. Um, this is, um, a story that follows a little boy whose granny is teaching him to make their family's favorite foods uh, for Soul Food Sunday. And so it's a it's a, a great book about family, about celebrating foods, about coming together around foods and how um you know food is a huge part of of, of our of everything, uh, every part of everything we do has food um, surrounded in it. And it comes from years and years and years of traditions, you know, spread, um, you know, throughout each generation and then integrating that within, you know, a uh, different culture. So really great um, book. Um, and the, the lesson that we paired with this is um, the colors on your plate. I'm sorry. I like I'm a little rusty at this. We haven't done a virtual presentation in a while. But Colors of Your Play is a, a really easy activity that you can do, and it highlights the My Play um, uh, website. So, you know, you, you, you originally had the food pyramid. Now we have My Plate, and it shows um, how you should, um, you know, put out your plate, how, like the, oh my gosh, what serving sizes, uh, what your plate should look like and how it should be divided. So your fruits, grains, vegetables, proteins, and then dairy. Um, so we just have a paper plate. You have your students um, make uh, those different uh, sections and then draw uh, what their favorite foods are that fit those specific categories. Um, a really cool thing to do ahead of time, not only is this a, a way to get students, you know, um, especially your art or your art uh, focused students, um, getting them uh, some more art in the classroom, but um, having them share what their favorite foods are. So some students might not know what grains are. And so you could talk to them ahead of time, you know, like let's list some of our, our favorite foods in these categories to give your students those ideas. And also, you know, it are the plates going to look the same? And the, and the answer is no, there's a, just like the same theme, there's gonna be a lot of similarities, but there's also gonna be a lot of differences. Um, and so we've got uh, that really awesome activity there. Okay, May Your Life Be Deliciosa. That is our next book in this category. Um, this book follows a character, Rosie and her grandmother, and they make tamales for Christmas Eve. And that's just one of their uh, family traditions that they do. And Rosie's grandmother um, teaches her you know, about all of the ingredients for making tamales um, in their specific family recipe, um, and then the meaning behind each ingredient. So that's really cool. It's not just making something for a family tradition, but she's teaching um, that spoken uh, tradition of where it comes from and what is the meaning. Um, so there's a just a really beautiful um, book. The illustrations are really cute. Great for a read aloud, really easy sentence structure. So really awesome book. Um, and the activity that we paired with this one is um, 
Oh my gosh, what cilantro, is this? Cilantro, cilantro and coriander. <laughs> the cuisine. Cuisine. I the alliteration. I know. So cilantro and coriander cuisine, we love this activity. Um, and that's because it is talking about how one single plant, uh, we can utilize two different parts to change the flavor of uh, the food that you're using that for. Um, and specifically two separate cultures and use uh, the different parts of the plants for their foods. And so we have coriander, which is the seed of the plant. Um, and you're going to find that as a spice. You usually find it um, as ground coriander. Uh, it's uh, typically found in a lot of um, Indian cuisine. And then we have cilantro, the leaves of that same exact plant, um, which is typically harvested. Uh, you cut up the leaves and that's more for um, Mexican style and Spanish style dishes. So it's really cool to see that one single plant can have two separate uh, parts that are utilized in different cultures for a completely different taste of food, but they're come, you know, they're from the same exact plant. So in this activity, they use some uh, very uh, budget friendly, and easy materials to make the plant itself. Um, you've got the leaves, the seeds, the flower, you know, the roots and all of that. Um, really cool idea to also uh, introduce some of these foods to your students and uh, maybe have them, you know, taste test different things. Um, the next uh, book is Pizza, A Slice of History. And this book is really cute. It's just about the, uh, the history of pizza. Um, and it's, uh, it's told in a really fun and easy uh, to read way. Um, and it also is highlighting um, the different cultures around the world that eat the pizza. So not only the history of the pizza, but then the cultures um, that have celebrated and taken on the pizza as one of their, their dishes. Um, and so we have paired our wheat milling activity with this. Um, this is one of my favorite activities by far, because you can definitely talk about the entire uh, process from seed to harvest with an activity like this. And basically, um, you have wheat heads, you can talk about the different, uh, you know, parts of the plant, you've got the stalk and um, the kernel and the seed coating and the beard and all of that fun stuff. Talk about different varieties of, of wheat and what we use them for. Um, then you can have them separate. You just put the, the wheat head in between your hands and with a little bit of, of movement, um, you can separate all of the different parts and then you get the kernels. So you can see the actual kernel. It's the seed. That's what we plant. Um, but the best part about this is that if you just get a, a very basic um, pepper grinder, and put the wheat seeds in the pepper grinder and then grind that up, you get flour. And it's not as refined because it's the peppercorn uh, grinder. So um, you're still gonna have some of like the different shell of the, the seed and everything, um, but you get flour. And so you have now taken your student all the way through from the seed, the plant, um, talking about harvest. And the um, another cool thing is then the, the stalk, of, of this plant then is um, is straw, which we use for bedding and, you know, uh, decorations for our porches and our spooky season coming up. So a lot of really cool things that you can talk about. Um, and then the fact that we have to utilize flour to make breads for the base of the pizza. And, you know, where do we get the other ingredients? What, um, you know, what commodity do those come from? And talking about all of the different ingredients. Uh, pairs perfectly with, um, if you're in the fourth or fifth grade, grade um, uh, age group, we have our, our brand new pizza ag mag that was just released. So Lee wrote that um, a great way to uh, highlight where all of the different ingredients from pizza come from. And our very last book of this category is pumpkin pie for Sig. Sigid, which is a holiday tale. Um, and in this book, we have a character, Maddie, who has just moved to Israel um, and is preparing for the local um, Ethiopian Jewish holiday. And that is what Sigid is. Um, and it falls right around the same time as Thanksgiving. Um, and so uh, Maddie wants to make pumpkin pie for the gathering um, and bring over something that was her family tradition. Um, and she helps her new friend Orly, uh, or her new friend Orly helps her find um, ingredients from the local market to make something not quite like pumpkin pie, but as similar as they can with the ingredients that were available um, in that area. Um, really cute book uh, about, you know, moving, um, you know, finding friends and, and building new friendships in an area where you're not familiar with, finding um, different foods and utilizing those. So really great family book, friendship book, 
um, and finding out, um, you know, being brave and, and all of that stuff. So really awesome book. And then the activity that we paired with this is our pumpkin pie in a bag. And if you've not made this, don't be thrown off by the title, um, but it is probably one of the most delicious and easy uh, recipes you could make in your classroom. Very simple ingredients. You just throw all of that, literally all of this in a bag and you just squish it all together and then you can just cut the, the tip of the baggie and put it into little um, little paper cups. You know, you can put some, you know, uh, toppings, sprinkles, cinnamon, anything on top, put some um, whipped cream on top, um, all of that. So really cute book talking about recipes. You can have students share recipes, you know, anything like that. So those are our books for the Celebrating Diverse Foods and Families category. All right, the next category is graphic novels. Um, graphic novels are a very popular kind of trend among our students right now, especially if you're teaching like upper elementary or middle school um, or even high school. Um, and so we jumped on the trend and we're offering a category of graphic novels that are related to agriculture in some way. Um, so the first one we have is Pumpkin Heads. Um, this is a, a cute story. Um, it follows Deja and, and Josiah, their friends who work together at a local pumpkin patch. Um, and they they call them seasonal best friends because they're best friends only during like this month and a half that this pumpkin patch is open and then they don't really talk the rest of the year. Um, and it's their last season, they're seniors in high school um, and they're gonna go out with a bang. It's like their last night of, of their last season working at this pumpkin patch. And so they actually go and experience um, all the different like kind of touristy or whatever things that the pumpkin patch has to offer. Um, and there's like a little bit of romance involved and it's, it's very cute. It's a very cute graphic novel story. Um, um, and so pumpkins, of course, are super relevant to Illinois, being the, uh, the top pumpkin producer um, in the country by far. Um, and so just a lesson that we like for this one um, is pumpkin catapult. Um, you can just take a few popsicle sticks and some rubber bands and end up building a catapult. And then especially if you want to do this one, um, well, I guess this would be a spring project, so not a fall project. But after fall, if you want to get on discount the little um, pumpkin candies, um, you can launch those with your, with your pumpkin catapult. Catapults. And then you can also use the same kind of like physics design kind of engineering elements and they actually make catapults like out of PVC pipe that will launch like for real pumpkins. So that's just a mini version of, of that kind of idea. Um, the next one is measuring up. Um, and so this is 12 year old Cece is our main character and she just moved to Seattle from Taiwan. Um, and she's trying to learn how to cook specifically because she wants her grandmother to come over and visit her, um, but she cannot afford a plane ticket. And so she wants to learn how to cook so she can win a children's cooking contest and get the monetary prize and buy her grandmother a ticket to come over and visit her um, for her birthday specifically. And so it's basically just like a, a cooking book. It's the story of her learning how to cook. Um, and so not necessarily a specific lesson that we're pairing with this one, but just kind of an idea of something to integrate um, is we have a bunch of recipes up on our website, um, easy to use recipes to make different things with some ag commodities that may or may not grow in Illinois. Um, and so those are all on our website. We've put a, a couple of them up there for like apple crisp or dirt pudding. Um, and so you can utilize those as well. Um, from our website. The next one is the Great American Dust Bowl. Um, it's another um, kind of dust bowl story, kind of like erosion, um, Hugh Bennett kind of was. Um, it allows us to get a glimpse into like the experience of the dust bowl and the history of that um, and learn about how detrimental it was to our soil, but in like a graphic novel kind of format. Um, and so a lesson that we kind of paired for this one is our say it with soil. It's one of our favorite lessons to do um, about soil. And it just looks at some different quotes um, that have been said by influential people like FDR or Leonardo da Vinci um, in our history about how important soil truly is. Um, and if we don't protect it, if we don't pay attention to it, um, then we're ultimately going to deplete all of our soil of its resources or it's all going to erode away and become unusable to us. So um, just kind of opening students' eyes to how important soil truly is. And we like this one as a think, pair, share activity. So you would give a different quote to each student, have them think to themselves some thoughts about their quote, pair with their neighbor, kind of share their ideas, and then share with the whole class and have a discussion. So 
Um, a few more in this category, Stepping Stones and Apple Crush are actually um, sequel, Stepping Stones and then Apple Crush is the sequel. Um, so Stepping Stone tells a story of Jen as our main character. Um, she leaves the city because her mom has a new boyfriend who lives on a farm. And so she has to move um, with her with her mom to her boyfriend's farm. Um, she's got a stepsister that she butts heads with kind of in the story um, as she learns to adapt to life on the farm. Um, and also there's a big farmer's market component to this. So um, she's learning how to kind of um, work their booth at the at the farmer's market. Um, so we have a lesson called Design Your Farmer's Market Booth. Um, it goes really well with our new Farmer's Market Ag Mag that came out um, within the last year or so. Um, and kind of talking about the different methods that farmers will use to like marketing methods to bring um, the consumers at the farmer's market into their booth and sell their produce. And so um, they would the students would use kind of this template and design their farmer's market booth and talk about the reasons behind what they um, chose. And then Apple Crush is the sequel to Stepping Stones. Um, it follows Jen. She goes back to school and tries to navigate keeping up with her new sister's crushes. It's kind of just more like a, um, a silly thing about her sister having all of these crushes and balancing school and teenagers and, and life on the farm. So, um, so it's a, kind of just a sequel to um, Stepping Stones. So um, the, the lesson that we paired with this one are just kind of to talk about with all of these, you could use it with any of these as our graphic novel um, analysis. Um, and so this is just an activity that allows students to um, maybe like kind of design some of their own panels or, or just di dissect the different components of a graphic novel because reading a graphic novel is a very different experience from reading a book with just text. Um, so kind of learning how to, uh, how to analyze what's in a graphic novel. The last one in the category um, is a really good one called Little Monarchs. This is kind of like an apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic kind of story. Um, it's set 80 years in the future. Um, and so our main uh, character, LV, um, is, is in this story. And so the, the premise is that 80 years in the future, the majority of the human population has been wiped out by something called sun sickness. So we ultimately became um, allergic to the sun and we cannot go out in the sun or we die. Um, but a select group of people, small communities of people figured this out before they succumbed to the sun, sun sickness and basically started living in caves or underground um, and only coming out at night. But LB, one of the, the other people in her camp, has figured out how to create a, a medicine or a, an anecdote to antidote to sun sickness, and it comes from monarch butterfly wings. And so they're traveling around trying to follow the monarch so that they can make more of this um, sun sickness medicine and, and help people to, to uh, acclimate to kind of a new life after this apocalyptic situation. Um, so really, really good one. Um, one thing that we just wanted to, to kind of highlight is the Illinois Monarch Project for this. This is not something um, we are doing. This is kind of an external thing that we just wanted to, to make sure you were aware that existed. Um, but it's basically an effort to try and plant more um, milkweed stems because milkweed is the primary uh, food source uh, kind of habitat for monarch butterflies. And so an, in an effort to try to protect and, uh, you know, rehabilitate the population of monarchs um, in Illinois. So that's our graphic novels. Okay. And on to our final category for our book grants. This is our chapter book. So um, obviously we're talking about, you know, sixth grade and up. Uh, some of these books would be fine for your fifth grade readers. Um, uh, and we highlight that, that age group in the, the grant booklet that you can find online. Or if you were at one of our SAIs, you got that as well. Okay. So dry. Um, this book is uh, talking about um, the story of a hodgepodge group um, of California teens who are trying to survive um, amidst this uh, tap out is what they call it. Um, and the, basically all of the drinking water in California runs dry and then chaos um, ensues. And so uh, the, the crazy thing about this is that we are seeing a lot of droughts, you know, more often in the United States. And so it definitely is an eye opener, a really uh, a great book to have conversation with like current events going on um, and all that. 
Um, and so the the activity that we have uh, paired with this one um, is our activity called Wad of Watershed, Wad of Watershed, basically learning about the flow of water, where water goes, why we should care about water health and fresh water. Um, and basically you would learn about um, where the watersheds are. So for here in Illinois um, and our Illinois teachers, we have this watershed map. Um, and so you can see all of the different watersheds on here. Um, and so then you would just use wax paper. Um, you could put uh, different washable marker marks on the wa on the on the wax paper, um, and then you use a, a spray bottle to spray to show where um, the water is flowing and how it flows down uh, to the lower elevation. So anything like the the marker would represent um, any you know pollutions or you know all sorts of different things. And so you can see where uh, when you spray the the water, or I'm sorry, when you spray the marker, it will you know flow with the water. Um, you can use all sorts of different stuff, but it's just a way to show show the, the flow of water and, and why we need to take care of water for those of us, you know, who are downstream from other, you know, areas, all sorts of different cool conversation that you can have. But this is an excellent novel. Um, and again, really uh, a great way to tie in the conversation for current events um, taking place. Uh, the next book, this is such a cool book. Um, this is called What We Harvest. Um, and our main characters are Ren and Derek, um, and they're the only two people who are left to save their uh, once uh, charming farm town and its uh, miracle crops, um, which have been nearly destroyed by blight. And so the cool thing about this is that we're looking at a, a disease, a plant disease that can wipe out um, all of our crop, which is very relevant to, you know, growing crops and, and especially with changing weather patterns and whatnot. Um, but a great way to talk about um, what could be living in our soil that might just be dormant until the perfect uh, weather conditions take place and then just grow out of control. Um, and so we have paired this uh, with a new activity that we just created. It's called Winogrotsky Columns. Um, Winogrotsky Columns are not new. It is not anything that we personally created. Uh, this is from Sergei Winogrotsky from the 1800s. He was a Russian scientist who wanted to study how um, microbes in our soil interact with each other within their community. And at that time, we had a lot of different um, microbiologists, um, people like Louis Pasteur, um, who were specifically focusing on certain microbes of you know, our bodies, our digestive systems, or of other different things, and how they behaved once we isolated them. And Sergi Wynagroski wanted to know, well, we can see how they behave when they're isolated, but they don't live isolated. They live in communities with many, many, many different uh, types of organisms. And so the Weiner Grotsky column, you just use little uh, soda bottles, you put um, your, your soil in there, your water, and then uh, a carbon source and a sulfur source. And you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But basically, you're growing the different microbes. And at a certain point, they grow in such massive colonies that they turn colors and you can actually see them. And so, um, you know, you're going to have your greens near the top, which are going to be your algae, which we can definitely see when you're driving by ponds that, you know, have no water movement. Um, there's going to be your iron oxidizers that have like this iron kind of rusty color. So a really awesome and unique way to see uh, microbes without having to use a microscope um, and see how they work together based on, I mean, they're all mixed up when you first put it together and then they find where they're layering. Um, and based on the components, if there's oxygen at the top, any microbe that needs oxygen will not be at the bottom and same with sulfide and, and, and sunlight and all sorts of different stuff. So you could definitely talk about microbes living in the soil. Most of them are good. Most of them will not harm human beings or plants at all. They're just there to help decompose and survive. But sometimes there are, um, you know, things that this, this covers a specific type of blight. While blight is a huge problem, you can talk about, uh, you bring some history with the great potato famine and the blight that took out all the potatoes. Um, but we also have blight here in, um, in Illinois uh, that can affect pumpkins. And we have seen damage to pumpkin fields because of blight. Um, and so uh, an interesting way to, to take real life concepts um, and, and to bring it into a, a fictional story. Um, 
The next book is Prairie Lotus. We have had this one um, on our, our uh, previous years of book grant. It's just such an excellent book. Um, and Prairie Lotus is about our main character, Hannah. She is half Asian um, and her father, and they have to relocate um, into the prairie lands. And this is taking place in the 1800s, 1880s. Um, and they're trying to build a better life for themselves as dressmakers. Um, and so the entire time they're facing all sorts of different prejudice. Um, it, Hannah has a really hard time fitting in with her uh, her schoolmates um, at the new school she's at. And so there's a lot of real life, um, you know, conflicts that that you can talk about, um, get, you know, moving to a new place, trying to fit in, maybe being somebody who has a different ethnicity that um, you don't feel like you can fit in with anybody or you or maybe some of your students have um, unfortunately faced prejudice, you know, in their schools, you know, at, at any point. And so a great way to see how people can overcome that, but also our, our characters are dressmakers. And so what do they have to do to get the fabric and to, to get the, the different materials that they need to make clothing? And so the activity that we have uh, paired with this uh, specific book, um, well, first of all, we have a reading guide. We do have some reading guides for a handful of our, our uh, favorite chapter books. Um, so there's a reading guide for Prairie Lotus. Uh, but also, um, you could have students, we have a uh, sweater weather weaving, and it's basically just utilizing different types of, you know, yarn or string um, to uh, weave or make bracelets. So, so you could do something simple as a braided bracelet, you could do some um, uh, basket weaving, you know, to show that that uh, that um, certain style of, of crossing uh, the different strands over one another, um, all sorts of different things. It's a really cute activity, um, but again, bringing in that, that fashion sense, where do our clothes come from? What's the process of getting our clothes? Where does the fabric come from? Um, again, tying in with Soiler Undies, a lot of it is gonna be grown organically from cotton or we you know raise a sheet for wool and all that, but we do have synthetic material um, that we have to you know, create. We're not raising it or growing it. So that is our um, activity for Prairie Lotus. Three more books we have as brave as you. Um, this is, uh, we're following our characters, uh, Jeannie and Ernie, and they have a summer of complete lifestyle changes. Um, they are visiting their, their grandpa's house um, out in the country, and he has a lot of chores uh, for them to do to help him out. And so they learn um, a, a handful of new skills. Um, they have to raise pea plants and, um, you know, picking the peas, weeding them, all sorts of different stuff. So uh, they have never had to do any any sort of chores or, or farming in general. And so this is a big eye opener. Um, uh, coming of age story, you know, learning a lot about themselves um, at, you know, themselves and themselves, as, you know, within their family. So the activity that we have with this is called plant maze. Um, this is a way to see uh, how plants move um, to try to find light. There's a lot of really cool um, uh videos online that are sped up so that you can see if you change the position of the light, the plants will actually move to follow the light. It's very cool. So in this case, you would have a shoe box. You have your students design the inside with a you know certain amount of um, uh, different levels putting holes in there. And then at the top, you would have a light. And so we um, tied this in because using pea plants is uh, the best plant to use if you're going to do this activity because they grow pretty quickly and they're sensitive um, to those lights. So on the student worksheet, you would have them uh, first design what they think they want the inside to look like. They would draw it here. Um, and then uh, they would get it going. This side would be complete. It would be completely shut. The only light that's coming in through the box would be through this top hole right here. But you would have every other side completely shut. Um, and then you, there's just a worksheet to have them then mark um, how how their plant has grown after X amount of days. And so you can say, you know, our first check was, you know, three days in or seven days in. And so then they draw it for every time they check it. So really cool uh, um, uh, lesson, a lot of uh, different science topics that you can talk about there. 
Um, the next book is uh, Save Me a Seat. Um, this is about our characters, Joe and Ravi, and they're unlikely friends that are finding common ground and navigating um, through school and different relationships together. So there's a lot of concepts about bullying and, and being bullied and how to um, handle bullying and, um, and two friends who would never be friends, but they come together in this case and, and um, uh, kind of have each other's backs the entire time. And so a lot of this uh, takes place in the cafeteria. There's um, a lot of different uh, talks about nutrition and food. And so we have highlighted a couple different parts. Every, almost every single one of our ag mags has some bit of um, information about the nutrition, the nutritional fe uh, features um, within that commodity. So this one is a, a clip from our beef ag mag talking about all the essential nutrients from beef. Um, this one is from our apple ag mag talking about all the health benefits um, and nutrients that you get from eating apples. And so um, definitely a great way to talk about, you know, what is on our school plate and what are we eating and what are the health benefits for those certain things. The very last book for our book grant and for this category is a book called Three Strike Summer. Um, this is about Gloria and her family, um, and they move uh, with the harvest to help pick peaches. Um, so wherever there is peach harvesting, they're going to move um, to follow that and help with the harvesting. Um, very similar to if you read the thing about luck um, with wheat harvesting. Um, but we have um, our family that is... Um, uh, they harvest peaches. Peaches have to be harvested by hand, um, and they are facing everything from surviving a drought, um, surviving a dust uh, dust storm, and losing almost everything that they own. So there's a lot of really um, heavy topics in here that uh, many of our students can relate to in you know some way, shape, or form. And so it's a really uh, a great book for that. And so um, what we did, again, like uh, uh, the previous book that we talked about, um, the activity that we have with this is um, apple related. Um, and so apples and, and peaches, um, both fruit trees. And so um, when we're talking about growing different varieties, um, it takes many years for a, a fruit tree to become mature enough to actually bear fruit. Um, and so instead of just growing trees from seeds, what we do is we can graft or bud. There's processes called grafting and budding where you would cut um, the rootstock and join it in. Um, and so there's a variety of ways that you can do this. But our apple grafting activity talks about using uh, straws um, to do that, two different color straws to show um, how we would take two different, you know, uh, uh, um, two different plants and uh, fuse them together. So then our new growth has the traits for both of those plants. And so it could just be that we want to grow more trees. It could be that you're growing a new variety for different um, traits and characteristics that you want. So something maybe you want it juicier or you want it to be, um, you know, drought resistant. So different traits from different apples that you can, um, you know, bring in some talks about genetics and all of that stuff as well. So those are our chapter books. Lee is going to talk about our previous winners and give some examples. Yep. So those, all of those were just kind of summaries of the books and some examples of some different lessons and activities of ours that you could um, pair with these books. And so we wanted to make sure that we also gave you some examples of what some previous people have um, have done with this book grant. Um, I'm not going to read this slide word for word, nor am I going to even like read all of the different sticky notes or pads of paper that are on here. Um, this PowerPoint slide, all of these PowerPoint slides will be available to you um, to go back and read through um, kind of after the, the workshop as well. But um, but there's a, just a bunch of different cool ideas on here. So like the top right corner that an eighth grade teacher that got some pollination books and pollinator books with their book grant. Um, and they had some science buddies in, in first grade. And so they did some of our uh, pollinator lessons and used our pollinator, the pollinator books that were offered um, in a previous year's book grant to, um, to kind of teach, help teach those concepts at, about bees and honey making and anatomy of pollinators and that kind of stuff. So um, just some good ideas kind of on here. You're certainly not limited to what's on here, but this is just intended to spark some inspiration from um, previous recipients of book grants. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are gonna move on to the project grant. 
I will talk about the project grant. We will answer questions and then we will show you where you can find all of the resources, everything that we talked about, all those activities that we mentioned and paired with all of our book grant books, um, we have on a specific page so that you don't have to go searching through our entire website and all the different categories to find them. We have pulled them out. They are all on the page. So we'll show you where um, you can get that at the very end. Um, and so for our project grant, same with the book grant, the purpose of this is to create um, an interesting, valuable agriculture experience. We're trying to integrate ag into your classroom. Um, many topics are getting kind of pushed aside, especially at lower levels. And so we want to show students where do your or where does your food come from? Where do your clothes come from? Why is it really important to take care of the soil? You know, because it's just dirt, but it's more than that. And and why should we care about water and where it goes and and why should we care about the supply chain and understand how all of that works. So there's agriculture in general is such a huge, huge topic. It is not just large scale farming and a red barn and dairy cows. There is so much more to it. You know, we've got veterinarians, we've got um, professors and scientists who are studying disease, plant diseases like blight. Um, you know, we have all sorts of different people in many, many aspects. So with the project grant, keep an open mind. You do not have to, I mean, you can definitely uh, um, make connections in many, many different ways. So you're going to do some sort of project, okay, um, and you are going to tie it somehow into agriculture, and it could be as out of the box as you want or as in the box. Um, grants need to focus on materials that can be used over and over. We're not, it's not a one and done sort of thing, so we're not going to give funding for any field trips, um, any sort of landscaping things like uh, plants and seeds and things that, um, you know, you'll plant and then they're done once you harvest or sometimes, especially since this is a spring thing, not many people are going to will uh, be willing to take their time over the summer to take care of those plants and whatnot. Um, there's tons of incubators in Illinois. So if you want to do something with incubation, please reach out before you write the grant. Um, and then any consumable items. Um, things like um, any anything that is a one use and done, we're not going to provide funding for. So um, like if you want to do some sort of like um, weaving uh, with wool or whatever, we could definitely fund for the tools for that, but not for the wool itself. Um, so keep that in mind. But lots of uh, different things. The dates are all the same. In this case, the difference is that um, you'll get up to $300 um, worth of, of, of funding. So basically you, uh, you submit your proposal. Um, um, if we uh, accept it and you are awarded the grant, then you go and buy all the materials and we reimburse you for that. Um, and so you just submit your, your uh, receipts and you, in the um, application, you'll itemize and, and give us an idea of, you know, I want this specific thing and it costs this much and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And here's how we're using it um, for our project. So all the dates are the same. October 20th is the deadline. You'll be notified on November 10th, uh, whether you were awarded or not. Um, and then you have to have the funding agreement. If you do not do the funding agreement, we will not reimburse uh, anything that you've already bought. So keep that in mind. We have to have the funding agreement completed. Um, and then the final report again on May 31st. The final reports are there so that we can see that you have used those materials that we gave you both for this and for the book grant, but also because we have a lot of um, a lot of uh, partners um, in the RIA Foundation and our funders who give us the money to make this possible. They love to see what we what is happening in the classrooms and how their money is going towards educating students. And so it's a great way to um, to uh, show them that their their dollars are are worth it um, for this program or for these grants. And so we really appreciate pictures and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so on this slide, I'm just going to kind of highlight some of these. This is a, a, a range of different um, age groups. Um, and so like over here, uh, we had The Hungry Planet as one of our book grant books. Um, you can get books with the money for this if, if um, 
you know, it's not part of the book grant or you're not applying for the book grant or you're at an age grant level where you just want something different. But in this case, we had um, a teacher who uh, utilized the Hungry Planet books um, and they developed a whole online uh, program um, which uh, pushed the students to learn how to code um, and see the impacts of erosion on farming land. So they did stuff with uh, uh, different uh, countries around the world and learned about the soil and the economic impact of farming and what might impact the farmers, um, weather, you know, um, weather conditions, uh, climate, you know, all sorts of different stuff. So they developed this online program and, and did that. So that was within that teacher skill set. That's what they used the money for. And it was, a, um, so it was the materials themselves were the books, Hungry Planet, what the, and what the world needs. And so they used the books to help guide them for this online program. So that's very out of the box sort of thing. Um, in this one, we had a third grade teacher who uh, had requested materials to uh, build a small greenhouse. They already had um, a school garden for their third grade, um, and they wanted to add um, a greenhouse to that. And so they had requested materials um, to start building, um, and they had um, another grant as well um, that they had already been given to, to help them out with this. Um, but a really unique and cool way to add more to the garden that they already had. Sixth grade, um, in this case, this sixth grade teacher, the materials that they got were cell models for uh, plant cells and animal cells. And they also got um, some uh, little microscopes. And the part, the whole purpose of this was to learn about the different um, uh, parts of different plants and the cells of plants and animals that you can connect to. Um, why do we have to do all this research about growing corn and soybeans? And why are you know we looking into different seeds? And you know what could affect the growth of that crop? And looking at those plant and animal cells, um, but making that connection with agriculture and, and the the crop that we grow and the livestock that we raise. Um, I do want to mention that we uh, have all summer at all of our SAIs have been uh, promoting these microscopes, these tabletop microscopes um, that uh, we just, we found them and we love them. They're from Amazon. They've got a little screen. You can uh, project it onto the board, um, you know, live and see, you know, go take some samples, you know, all sorts of stuff. So that, did we put that on? Um, it's not page. on that page. It's on the SAI page, but I can move it okay. over to there. Well, we'll move it. Um, but in the meantime, if you are really trying to uh, uh, see that on our website, there is um, in the teacher resources um, in our SAI page, we have the, the microscopes linked under there. So really great. There's um, the tabletop microscopes and there's something called fold scopes, which are paper microscopes. Also another great way to... Um, you know, look at things like pollen and, um, you know, the structure of leaves and whatnot without having to have like a, a really expensive, you know, um, microscope. Um, we had a high school foods class. This is one of my favorites. And this is, if you were at any of the SAIs that I did, I'm going to, I already had talked about this one, but we had a high school um, uh, foods class. So, um, who got kitchen scales. So we're like, okay, well, how does that fit in? So they use the scales to weigh, uh, it, and it's it's a, an activity called Meets of the Matter, and you basically weigh uh, how much waste you have. And so um, like, uh, if you're looking at grapes, you weigh a bunch of grapes, right? And then you take them and you remove the parts that you don't eat, and then you weigh it again and you see what that difference is. And so the weight of waste is gonna be less for grapes than something like a pineapple where you have to cut off the top, the you get the core out and you do all of the, the outside for the peel. And that we waste a lot more with a pineapple than with something like grapes. And so um, she made that connection and then talked about composting and um, uh, reducing food waste um, and landfill space. So it was really a unique out of the box sort of thing. Um, and then lastly, our eighth grade, uh, hydroponics is really popular. There's a lot of people who, drew, who do hydroponics, um, lots of different kits. Um, 
for a lot of different uh, styles. Some teachers in the past have gotten actual kits that you just put together. Um, some teachers, um, like this teacher specifically, uh, got the grant for the PVC piping and had blueprints and everything um, already drawn out and they were making it themselves. And so it depends on your skill level, your, your background understanding of all that. But there's a lot of hydroponic kits out there that you can find that are easy to set up. All the parts are there. The cool thing about this this uh, eighth grade teacher is that they also did um, connected it to an aquaponics. And this isn't the first time we've had a teacher do this, um, where they also had goldfish in a tank and the students had to test and maintain that proper pH for the, the fish tank. And then that water was used uh, for the hydroponics. Um, and so they had to really maintain the balance of the pH and, and track that data and, and, and do all of that. Um, and so they, they had a great job, do, a great time doing that. Um, we have had uh, teachers in second, third, fourth grade do hydroponics. Um, so it's up to, up to your how comfortable you are doing that um, and and um, all that. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. We have a lot of teachers who do hydroponics and then they'll um, grow either lettuces or different herbs and then um, have the students try it because a lot of students have never even had like grown their own food or, or eaten it fresh right off of, of the stem. So a lot of really cool ideas that we've got there. Um, we are going to take a minute. I'm going to exit out of here. Or actually, can we see the Q and A? Oh, looks like Chris was answering questions. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Thanks, Chris. All right. So it doesn't look like there's any general questions. There were more specific to their classroom. So if you have any um, question, we're gonna. Um, we still have um, some time, and so um, please feel free to ask any questions on here. Just to reiterate, our grants are for you to be able to either utilize the books or the materials to integrate some aspect of agriculture, any sort of aspect. Pollinators are super popular in the spring, but you could even, I mean, there's there's all sorts of different things. So if you have specific questions, feel free to reach out to us. If you if um, just email us, we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, you still have a couple months to think about it. Again, they're not due for until um, October um, 20th. Um, we do have a question. Yes, you can ap apply for both. They will be two separate, uh, two separate applications. Um, and you don't necessarily have to mention one or the other. Um, don't write them to rely on one or the other. So if you wanted, let's let's say specifically you were you wanted the books in the soil category. Um, and you wanted the microscopes I just mentioned. Um, don't write the grants that they um, need each other for you to complete whatever activities you have. Write them separately in hopes that you'll get both. But if you only are awarded one, it's not, you know, relying on the other to finish that activity, if that makes sense. So you can apply for one book grant and one project grant, and you may get both or you may not get both. But that was a great question. Yes. Um, but they are two separate applications on the website. And one other thing kind of along the same lines too that we didn't mention is you individually can only apply for one book grant, but another teacher in your building or multiple other teachers in your building can both can all apply. So more than one book grant can be awarded per school. So if you like books in both the graphic novels and the life on the farm category, you apply for books within one and have your teacher next door apply for books within the other. And then you are welcome to, to kind of share books and stuff too as well. So um, it's just one book grant or one project grant per teacher, but more than one in the same building can be awarded. And that's a good point. Um, while we're waiting, um, if there are any other questions, Lee is going to kind of finish up and show us on the website where you can find um, all this information. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the the little short link is is there as well um, to to access where all of these workshop um, materials are. But also, um, if you are wanting to find it on the website, where's my oh, stop share right there? Well, I want to keep sharing though. I just want to move that is all I want to do. 
Can I move? There we go. There, oh, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> on our website, um, if you go to, well, now I want to move it back. Um, if you go to programs and events and teacher grants, um, all of the information um, and also the packet that you um, kind of received in the summer, if you went to an SAI and that's kind of where you're coming to us from, um, is on this page. And then you can go specifically to the book grant page or the project grant page to apply for those. Um, you also can just underneath here, um, this is the information for our Get a Grant workshop. So this is where you would have registered if you registered that way. Or um, you also can click on this button to find the workshop presentation page. And this is what Stephanie was talking about earlier that has all of the specific lessons that we talked about um, in this activity or in this webinar, um, kind of all in one page, um, as well as the link to look at the presentation slides if you want to read through those examples um, some more too. All of these lessons also can be found in our teacher resources and lessons in their specific categories, but this page makes it really easy to find um, everything that we talked about specifically today. Um, and can you show them one more thing yeah. um, on, we'll just show you where the SAI page is with the microscopes oh, yeah. real quick. Yeah. So if you want to let that link to the microscopes or anything else for SAI under programs and events, Summer Ag Institutes, and then this page, 2023 Summer Ag Institute is where we have all of the stuff that we presented at Summer Ag Institutes this year. And if you scroll way down here under links for resources shared, um, this is where we linked some of those things. So tabletop microscopes is specifically what she was talking about mm -hmm. um, for tabletop microscopes. So yep, and the fold scopes. We are, even the erosion simulator kit that I had mentioned for um, the book erosion is in there. We've got soil sifters. And uh, if you are interested in writing your book grant application for the soil category, this would be a great page to come back and visit it because all of our SAI was focused on soil. So we have a lot more um, soil uh, focused stuff on this page as well. Yep. All right. We had one other question. Um, can you apply to get a copy of a specific book for each student as a follow-up to increase parent education? Um, we really want you to keep the books in your classroom. So it would be okay to have students borrow them. Um, to help increase that um, and to, to encourage the parents to read the, you know, the stories to the to their students at home. Um, but we would really, uh, we're the whole purpose of the grant is so that you can have these resources for year after year for every group of students that you have. Yeah. Um, so I would say more so of letting them borrow the books, but then keeping them in your classroom mm -hmm. at the very, um, at the very end. Yeah. Of that. But you can, if the book is, um, is priced in such a way that you want to get a whole classroom set of a specific book and then have them like kind of read along maybe with like the reading guide or something for like a chapter book, um, you definitely can get more than one copy of a specific book, as long as it's within the same category and you're spending within that 250. Um, but we just really want you to make sure that you're keeping them in your classroom as opposed to sending them them home mm -hmm. um, with students after the lesson. Yeah. So like if I was uh, if I was in the novel category and I wanted to do lit circles, I might get, depending on the price of the books, I might get five, you know, of each copy or as many of each book that I can to have my students be able to do lit circles. Or like Lee just said, I might get an entire classroom set of one book so we can all read it together. So it kind of depends on how you are thinking about utilizing the books in your classroom. Um, you know, or like the one of the uh, examples that Lee gave from a, a uh, the past participant um, or the past winner uh, when her eighth grade class went down to that uh, grade school classroom, um, they had like eight copies of each book in the pollination classroom or in the pollination category so that the students could kind of choose and then swap. So, you know, five eighth graders were reading one of the pollination book to five you know, students. And then the next time they visited, they had a different pollinator book to read to them. So, it kind of depends on how you're going to use them, but you have the whole $250. So depending on the category and the individual prices for those books within the category is going to depend on how many of each book that you can get. So 
Um, well, with that, uh, make sure uh, to keep following us on um, Facebook and all of that. We do have one more question real quick before we finish up. So I, my, so, my understanding would be that the $250 is only for books. Mm -hmm. So you're just spending the money on the books that are being offered for the book grant. If there is any excess money that you didn't spend over the $250, you're, you're just not receiving that money. Yeah. You can't use it to purchase other things. Yeah, you have the $250 to um, sell. So yeah, that was a, that's a great question. So if I had a, a really small classroom of maybe, you know, 10 to 12 students, I, you know, I may get 10 to 12, you know, books, but then I might have a hundred dollars left over and say, well, I, I'm not going to use any of those other books. I only want this one specific book for these activities that we're going to do. So I'm just going to get these books. It was only $110. The rest of it, I, you know, is you only get that. Um, same with the, the project grant, you have up to $300, but if the project that you choose is only 225, you, I mean, you submit your receipts to us, we cut you a check for that amount, um, for that, that specific amount. So, and then if you go over $300, you only get the 300. Um, but same with, same with the project grant, like, um, yeah, there, there's just a lot of it. It's kind of, uh, bait, you know, kind of based on your specific scenario in your classrooms. But if you do have questions um, after this, please reach out and we'll answer them. Um, if you're if you're questioning your ideas for the grant, if, if that's even what you can do, definitely send us an email and, and we'll um, we'll get those answered for you. So um, thank you guys for joining us today. We really, really hope that we have um, inspired some ideas for you to fill out um, and apply to one or both of the grants. Um, please follow us on, on social media. Um, we are always posting different um, activities, different uh, new books that we have discovered that are ag accurate that we wanna share with you. Um, and also we do have a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for um, to keep up to date with when, you know, like next year when grants are available and open up, you know, anything for our summer ag institutes. Um, and you can uh, sign up for the newsletter if you just go to our homepage. Um, it's going to be a little bit halfway down in that orange, um, that orange uh, little bar right there. So you can always unsubscribe at any time, but this is something we send out once a month real quick, just as a reminder of events coming up or new activities, new anything that we um, can provide um, to you guys to make your days easier. So thank you guys for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a great start to your school year. And we'll see you all later. <laughs> How do I get out of here? Okay.